Ziggurat Labs here to go over the Toshiba Libretto 110CT. Uh, this will be a full review and my opinion on why I believe this is one of the best mobile retro gaming devices you can get for DOS gaming from the late 1980s to maybe 96, 97, along with some uh, light Windows gaming. Um, I'm going to go over the specs, um, kind of a brief history of this libretto and the other librettos that come along that, that have also been around. Um, I'm going to kind of give you, go through a walkthrough of the different features uh, for this particular libretto. Um, and then I'll show you an in-depth tour of the windows that I've loaded onto it, which is just basically Windows 98, but with the games and my ultimate goal for this particular machine. The first generation librettos, which was a libretto 20 and a libretto 30, were both an AMD 486 DX4 processor, either running at 75 megahertz or 100 megahertz. They both came standard with an 8 megabyte onboard RAM, uh, and you can expand it to about 20 megs max. And they, I think, both either had a 200 or a 500 gig or megabyte, excuse me, hard drive. Um, with a 6.1 TFD display running at 640 by 480. The second generation librettos, which were the Libretto 50, Libretto 60, Libretto 70, and I also considered the Libretto 100 and 110 as a second generation, but more as a refresh. Uh, the 50, 60, 70, 100, and 110 all had Intel Pentium processors. From the 70 onward had the MMX instruction uh, in, uh, chipset included. Um, they all have EDO uh, RAM depending on the models you get. However, the 50, 60, and 70 all had the 6.1 inch display uh, running at 640 by 480. For the Toshiba Libretto 100 and 110, both featured the Intel Pentium but with the MMX technology. However, they now included a 7.1 TFT active display. Uh, which is slightly bigger than the 50, 60, and 70 models. They also had a native resolution at 800 by 480. The actual, the actual hardware between the 100 and 110, is, I think, is a, exactly identical. The only difference is, is the speed of the CPU and, of course, the hard drive space between the both. Let's now get into the overview of the Toshiba Libretto 110CT. For the 110, the CPU is an Intel Pentium 1 MMX P5 running at 233 megahertz with 32 kilobytes of cache. The chipset is actually a custom Toshiba chipset, very similar to the Intel 430 uh, with a PCI bus. The RAM on my current model is actually 96 megabytes of EDO memory running at 66 megahertz. Normally these models come with either 32 or I think 16 megabytes of memory and you can only officially support up to 64 megabytes. However, there is a protege, I want to say memory card that you can actually modify and that's what I've done to mine uh, to get up to about 96 megabytes of RAM. For my current model, the hard drive is actually a 8 gigabyte compact flash running at 800x uh, which is around 60 to 70 megabytes uh, read-write. These normally come with a Toshiba 4.3 gigabyte hard drive running at around 4200 RPMs. I still have the current hard drive for this model um, sitting in my desk. Um, it is very noisy, um, but what I would recommend to anyone is to actually just go ahead and update the compact flash. Uh, you do definitely get a, a significant speed increase, but more importantly is your battery life goes up tremendously. For the video card, and this is for both the 100 and 110 in my current model, is a Neomagic NM2160 or a 128. Uh, with two megabytes built into the controller. There isn't any 3D acceleration or support available for the card, um, but it is able to drive an external monitor at 1024 by 768 at 65 colors or 16 bit. The sound card, which I consider the most crucial aspect uh, for any retro gaming model for DOS, uh, is a Yamaha OPL3-SA3. 
which is a which includes an FM synthesizer, full duplex, and 3D sound support. Uh, they also run the same MIDI support as a Soundblaster Pro version 3, um, which only on these particular librettos only have one mono speaker, but they do support full stereo speaking. Um, again, guys, I consider this probably the most crucial and the hardest thing to find on any any model, uh, especially a laptop, because you can't change the sound card just like you can't change the video card. And trying to find something that works with all the games, uh, this sound card uh, does the best uh, with all that, with the full support and compatibility. So now let's take a look at the libretto. So here's the outside of the libretto 1110CT. And for actual comparison, let's bring over a VCR cassette and look how similar it is. It's actually not much bigger than a VCR cassette, both lengthwise height-wise and almost width-wise. It's actually 8.2 inches long, 5.2 inches wide, and 1.4 inches tall. On the right side you have your one infrared port running at I think 4 megabits uh, per second and then you have your PCM CIA slots. You have actually two of them, one 16-bit 132 bit which also supports card bus you also do have if you notice a little reset button right between both of those which is basically a little pinhole and you'd actually have to use a paper clip to actually reset it um, just in case it locked up toward the rear of this model you have both your ejection uh, mechanisms for the pc cmia slots you then you have a microphone jack and a headphone jack both at 2.5 millimeter uh, which are basically mini jacks so they actually don't accept your standard headphone jack you would actually have to get a little adapter for it uh, then your power which is also proprietary it's not one of those round ones it's actually a two pin uh, DC 15 volt I think running at two amps then you also have your ejection for your 24 milliamp I think um, battery which sits right here the battery is actually not that big um, but it does supply power for between I think two to six hours I think that's what the manufacturer said with the compact flash you can actually extend that even further on your left side you actually have nothing on the front you actually have an 80 button uh, keyboard layout with the function keys as well however this is not a full-size keyboard and put it in comparison I'm actually a pretty big guy my hands, I mean, one of my fingers would, almost goes over to the next button. Um, so it is enough to game on. Um, you do have your error keys, your function keys, and everything else. One thing you are missing is your numpad keys, but a lot of DOS games don't even recognize those. Um, you have your LED lights right here. There's actually four for power, sleep, uh, the hard drive activity light, and your battery status. Here is your Acu, it's called an AccuPoint mouse tracker or whatever it's called. Um, that is actually your mouse and you move it around just kind of like it would, would be with an old IBM where you had the ball right here, <laughs> just right here. However, your buttons are right here to, and you got your you know, left and right click. Regarding expansions, there's actually two expansions that you can purchase for this model. Uh, this is just the smaller one of the two. Uh, which includes a PS2 port, VJ out, your power, which is that two pin prong I mentioned earlier, your serial, and your LP2 2 port or printer port. This particular expansion can actually be driven by your battery. You actually don't need to plug this expansion in to actually use it, uh, which is nifty because when you want to play with a mouse, you can plug it into your PS2 port and use the keyboard on board. The larger expansion I think was intended to be more at someone's desk and for a corporate use as there's areas where you can drill in and mount this uh, to someone's desk. However, let's go over it. We'll start with the rear here. Toward the rear you'll notice that you have two PS2 ports, your printer port, your VGA out, and your serial. Um, another nifty thing about this bigger one is you actually have another so you actually have two PC CMIA slots, one 16-bit again and one 32-bit, and again sports card bus. On mine, if you notice, I have plugged in a Ethernet and a modem, uh, so I can actually take this thing on our network. 
on also you have USB and I can clarify this is 1.1 this is not 1.0 um, a lot of my 1.1 peripherals work with this um, I don't know if the chipset for USB is actually I think it's built into this dock or this expansion not and it's not on the actual physical libretto on the other side you have actually another expansion however it is only 16 bit with that set I've actually put a USB 2 um, PCCMIA uh, adapter so I can have a little bit more flexibility with USB your also power is located on this side so I've mounted the libretto to its bigger expansion port um, or expansion dock I've hooked up a little PS2 mouse um, so let me turn it on and kind of show you what I've done with it so Currently, I'm running Windows 98 SE with the Plus Pack, as you guys see. Um, again, the Plus Pack doesn't do too much, but it does add those nostalgic you know, desktop themes and a few games um, and just some multimedia stuff. It really doesn't do anything else. So I've also applied the unofficial Windows 98 SE service packs. Uh, at the time of this video, I believe it's 3.3.4, um, which it, it is. It, it helps it. A little bit, it helps the, I want to say the libretto and some of the drivers a little bit more stable. It also gives you the ability to do USB um, flash drives and a few other little things. So I do recommend it. However, I do not recommend installing Internet Explorer 6. Just keep it as is if you're running Windows 98 SE. It comes with 5. You're not really going to use it anyway. Um, if you really want to do any type of web browsing, uh, I do recommend using the, I think it's a Mozilla version 2.0 which is officially supported by Firefox um, or there's other browsers as well you can use uh, so let's go ahead and log in I am using a Windows 2000 theme and you'll notice the sound all my Windows 98 machines have the same look I usually keep a games folder a utilities folder and a shortcut to exit to DOS my objective with this machine was to run all the DOS games and all the Windows games within one UI or one GUI. I did not want to have to keep rebooting or exiting to DOS to run certain games and tighten the command line. I was trying to get everything running in Windows. Yeah, for a pure sake, I would I would go with yeah, you need to run it in DOS. But for for me to just pick this thing up and go somewhere, you know, if I'm sitting in an airport. Uh, for traveling or something, I can just turn this thing on and uh, load a game up on the fly. I don't need to type anything and um, try, to, try to remember the commands. I can just double click the icon and, and there we go. So let me show you. I do have, I think, 120 games loaded and I will put it at the bottom of this video uh, of all the games that I know are working on this particular machine. If you'd like to see a game on, on this machine run or if you had a question about it, please leave me a comment. Um, and I'll try to answer them. I'm just going to show you a few of them. I'm not going to waste your time going through every single video, every single game because there are a lot of them. But we'll do some of the big ones and my favorites. So, um, Command and Conquer. And I'm going to go through some of the ones that have the MIDI support and the DOS support. This is more of a Windows game, so this is not running in DOS natively. I've tried running this game, and actually it works just fine on my newer machines, um, but it runs, the scroll speed is ridiculous on the newer machines. The game speed runs just fine, but your scroll, if you just casually scroll down, it will just jump you all the way to the end of the map. Uh, on this machine, it runs flawlessly, it runs nice and smooth, and it's not jerking, it's not moving me all the way down to the end of the map. So it's kind of right in the air where there are stopping to write from the CPU speed so it didn't matter what CPU speed you had um, it would work for all but um, this does seem to run better on an older machine than it does on a newer one we'll 
I'll show you the classic. Actually, you know, before we do that, let's do another um, DOS game here. So this is a DOS game. When, when I click on it, I have everything running at maximum screen. So it doesn't run it in the window. Runs it at full screen. We're on the classic Doom, and I do run Doom 95. It seems to run a little bit better um, than the actual DOS, but it does run the MIDI. Classic Duke Nukem also runs running in DOS. I do like Dude Nukem with all its little kind of cool features where you can look at security cameras. Three for those who remember these old Microsoft home games, which were always actually pretty entertaining. Now, with this game, it, it is, I have to say, for the libretto, we're, we're kind of nearing its limits here with the 3D. As you guys know, and I said in the earlier the video, it doesn't have any 3D acceleration support, so it's all software-based. Um, it, do, it does a pretty good job for, for what it is, and, and, and I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, this is from this era of Toshiba's from 1998. Uh, this is 
kind of roughly two or three years after this game came out. Um, but it doesn't do too bad of a job running it. And I will show you the game that's kind of pretty much maxing this machine out for its capabilities. And you guys can notice the screen, the, the sound may, I don't know how it sounds on the camera. It is a little crackling and that's just due to the one speaker that, uh, that this model particularly has, but you can always hook up uh, stereo speakers, but it doesn't do too bad of a job. It, it, it does a pretty good job, but again, I would prefer to, um, but I'm not gonna criticize it for it. However, for those who remember, and actually did they recently, I think a couple years ago, came out with a newer version um, due to the, uh, how popular this game was back in 95 and this came with Windows 95 I love the MIDI on this uh, especially level 2 and again this sound card is phenomenal with the MIDI support it has and uh, the sound support it has for these games I do have the classic Microsoft Entertainment Pack, which some of you may know includes the Jazz Ball, one of my favorite games. You can waste a whole bunch of time playing this game. Um, love that's a pretty cool game. The Jigsaw it has the Puzzle Pack, the Entertainment Pack on it, and I think I have the Pinball Pack as well on this. The Pinball Pack uh, from Microsoft barely runs on this machine. I think that came out in '99. Um, it, it does run, it just doesn't run that well. Um, Magic Carpet, which I think was a Bullfrog. Um, yep, Bullfrog production. It has it in now that only, that, that Pentium thing only happens if you actually do have a truly um, a, a Pentium CPU. Um, and for some reason, I have a newer model, uh, a newer newer libretto, which I may do a review on if you guys like these videos, um, which for some reason it won't do that video. It doesn't think it's a real CPU, a uh, real Intel genuine CPU. This is a very popular game, uh, for those who know it. It's the Magic Carpet. It had a lot of real-time 3D. And it put kind of Bullfrog on the map. And I, I really do like Bullfrog. I wish EA never bought them. Uh, if you guys remember the Sim theme parks. Um, when it came out in 99. And then you got the theme, theme hospital and everything else. So this is kind of a cool game to, to play. The menu menu music 
is kind of annoying. My favorite game, I'd say, of all time would be the Mech Warrior uh, series. Probably the Mech Warrior 2 and 3 I enjoyed the most. Um, I haven't tried Mech Warrior 3 on this machine yet. I don't know if it will run. It does run Mech Warrior 2. However, a criticism to it, um, I have it running without the CD. It, I think this game's only good when you play it with the CD and the music. For those who know, the music comes with Mech Warrior 2. And I do, again, guys, I do have another, I can do another review on the, uh, another libretto that I do have, which I believe is probably the best machine to use for these kind of games. Um, but I think for nostalgic purposes, this is the, does the best for its era. And those who remember Mech Warrior 2 originally, and I'm not running the any of the Direct 3D or OpenGL again. No, no 3D support. I'm just running it natively as the game came on disc. Um, there are several variations and flavors to this game. Um, those who know it and who are running the Voodoo cards, you got the 3DFX version, which looks almost completely different. Um, same gameplay, but the graphics are completely different, and I think the computer talks a little bit differently too. Um, for me, I like the old version. This is what I remember growing up on and playing. Um, Image I have the original Need for Speed, uh, works just fine. The original Oregon Trail, the MM, was it MECC? Uh, Immersion Pipe Dream, of course. Prince of Persia, one of those classic games. It also. You have the music. This game for a lot of fun. So Quake is kind of at its limit on this this computer, um, and I'm going to show you another game called Tribes, uh, Starship Tribes, for those who remember it. Um, Quake, I cannot again run in 3D. I'm running it in software mode, and I think I'm only running it at either 320. I think it's at 320 right now. 320 by. Oh, Maybe it's at 640. It's at 640 by 480. Anything higher, um, I'll, I'll get graphical glitches and it doesn't run correctly. Um, so this is kind of at its max, uh, running at least decent frame rate. Uh, however, loading and everything else on these games with that compact flash uh, makes a world of difference. It, it is quite useful to have that.
the classic SimCity. Um, and the Dark Forces. So Dark Forces is two versions. You got the Force Unleashed um, and the original one, which is in DOS. So we'll play the DOS one first. All the MIDI works. These games are always really fun to play with. Dark Forces 2, which is a Windows, and it can do 3D acceleration. Um, however, this is probably at its max. Uh, I think it's one of the most demanding games I have besides Start, uh, besides Drives on this machine. Um, this game roughly came out at the same time um, this machine came out. You see there is a little lag there. finally show you guys um, if you guys remember the SCOM uh, engines from LucasArts so I run SCOM VM to run these games as I don't have a CD-ROM drive plugged into this up and it looks like I can't run it right now I'll have to figure out what's wrong with it I wonder why it's having trouble alright well I'll have to figure that one out why it's not working so I run SCOM VM I actually own almost all these games on CD or some type of disc um, and I've taken my CD dumped it as an ISO um, and plugged it in here so it can play via the scum and now it takes up a lot of space it's kind of a waste of space on this however um, it's one of my games I remember playing as a childhood too. Alright, so I'm going to show you Tribes and just kind of add its limitation here and this is at the lowest settings uh, that Tribes can run at. And 
And if you notice, there is quite a lot of frame, frame loss. It is still playable though. This is definitely um, at its max now. And I think actually, and I have a um, another another machine similar to this it's from a, it's a Sony era, it's kind of the same same time this came out um, that run, runs at 266 megahertz and it runs this game has a very similar uh, GPU um, graphics processor, so slightly has I think 0.5 more megs to the same same Neo Magic though. And it runs at 266 megahertz for the CPU, and it runes this game actually pretty well. Um, so I'm, and it actually can run Half-Life just fine. I've seen people run Half-Life on lower specs. I, I don't know why these this this particular machine maybe doesn't you know it's had it has a hard time running Half-Life. Um, so I didn't even bother installing it. Um, but it, it it seems that it can work. I just may need to tweak with it and figure out why it's um having so much trouble with it. Okay guys, um, if you guys want to see any more videos, um, please do like these and subscribe. I plan to do more more videos on these retro uh, gaming laptops, especially these mobile ones, these sub notebooks that are from the era 1990 to 2000. Uh, I do have quite a lot of fun trying to collect these. Um, they're actually worth quite a bit of money on certain models, especially these 110 models. I think uh, they can go from, depending on the uh, condition, from uh, at least 120. I've seen them up to almost five, six hundred dollars uh, for them. And then there's a Japanese version, which is a slightly higher uh, revision, which I may or may not try to get and do a review on. Um, that they're a little bit bigger than this, a little bit spec, just slightly higher than this particular 110 model. Uh, and um, those are quite worth quite a bit of money um, to try to try to find. So uh, please, guys, subscribe and like if you like these videos. Um, this is Ziggurat Labs signing off. So that's it for the Loretto 110 CT. Um, kind of my final thoughts and overview. Uh, it is a phenomenal machine, especially um, thinking as you can just eject it here. Oops, you can just eject it and take it with you, uh, just like that. Uh, there are no fans, no moving parts in this particular machine anymore. Now, when you had the hard drive, uh, the old hard drive in it, uh, that was the only moving part. But there is, it's all passive cooling. Uh, there is no fans that are cooling it. Um, it does run a little hot, not too hot though. It's not bad. Um, one thing I'd recommend it, f and you'll see a lot of these may on eBay, maybe not the 110s, but you'll see a lot of them not working. One quick easy fix I noticed this is if you don't have a hard drive in this at all, no hard drive, it won't boot at all. It won't even turn on. Um, so that's what was the case with this. I got it for 30 bucks um, on eBay. Um, it was in great condition, hardly used, as you guys see. It's, I mean, it's barely been any, barely been used, um, but it didn't work. And reading on the forums and reading about it, I figured, well, it may be just the hard drive because the hard drive's missing out of it. And sure enough, it was. Um, it did have a bad CMOS battery on it, um, so I was going to replace that and also adding the uh, protege memory card to it um, which bumps you up to 96 there are some guides online on how to get the protege memory working on this particular model there is some soldering involved um, you would also need to I think take out I remember doing this with the CMOS battery where it connects into you also have to kind of extend those wires out um, in order to fit the memory card um, but the memory is always uh, always a big plus um, if you guys like these videos, I plan to do more. Um, I think the next video um, I'm going to do is a teardown guide of the Libretto 110 just to kind of show you what's inside and what makes it work. And then a following up video will be the kind of 
counterpart to this, which would be a Sony um, C1. Um, it's a PCG C1. That kind of came out of the air, and that's what was competing with Toshiba on these particular really tiny sub notebooks, um, especially. And I try to find the ones that are only Pentiums. Uh, I don't like the what is it, the, the Crucima or whatever it's called. It's the one that came right after the Pentium that a lot of, a lot of manufacturers went to. I try to find the native Pentiums. I think they work the best and they're, they're the most compatible. If you like these videos, please like it and subscribe. Um, Ziggurat Industries and Ziggurat Labs signing off.